Hey guys, uh, Jeff here. Yesterday I watched 2012, the end of the world disaster epic from 2009. And I was not looking forward to seeing it really. It's just I didn't have a lot of other things on my Netflix uh, queue that I was I wanted to see. So it was like I had to choose something. So there was 2012. <clears throat> I just lately with any of these big blockbuster mainstream you know, long two and a half hour action summer movies. Uh, I just haven't had a lot of uh, success with them for me. I haven't, like trans Transformers, I couldn't even sit through the first one, let alone the second one. And director Roland Emmerich, who does a lot, you know, he's made a career out of doing these disaster movies. I like some of them but most of them I don't like like I didn't like Godzilla I don't think anyone liked Godzilla I hated the day after tomorrow I thought it was incredibly boring bad special effects and their special effects that only last like 10 minutes or 20 minutes very short section of the film I heard you know 10,000 BC which was also done by him was terrible I haven't seen it but he has had some success. He has, like, you know, still a fan favorite is Independence Day, even though it's underrated by critics and some people. And I get I get the love for Independence Day. I liked it when it came out. I think it's still fun to watch now. You know, and much to my surprise, 2012 is much closer in quality and the amount of fun that you're going to have with it to Independence Day than most of Emmerich's other stuff. I had, you know, so if you want my quick review right there, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the premise is basically there is a massive solar flare that's heated up the Earth's crust and basically is turning the Earth into soup. So everything's warmed up. You have flooding, volcanoes, you know, tsunamis, earthquakes, whole cities getting destroyed. It really is like the disaster flick to end all disaster flicks. It's disaster porn. You know, the whole world's getting wiped out. Uh, John Cusack is basically the main character. You know, this guy named Jackson Curtis who wrote one book, but which was published, but nobody bought it. He's not a successful writer. He's a divorced dad. You know, this is your typical plot for one of these movies. It's like the dad who's divorced and he's lost his family to this other guy. And he has to win them back, keep them safe, and save, you know, not save the world, but at least save them. You know, and somehow go from being a writer to an action hero. And, uh, you know, Cusack is fine in it. Amanda Pete is his ex-wife. I didn't realize it was Amanda Pete till the very end. I don't know how that happened, but I didn't. Thomas McCarthy is our new boyfriend. I like him. He's good in this. And if you don't know who he is, he's a... Uh, I think he's a director. He directed uh, The Visitor. And he also starred in Season 5 of The Wire. Um... There's almost, you know, those are your main characters, but there's all sorts of other plot threads and, you know, lots of characters. There's the guy from Red Belt, I can't pronounce his name. This black guy, he plays the geologist that helps the White House figure out what's going on. You have Oliver Platt, he's like a white, like a calculating White House insider, staffer. Oh, he's some advisor, he's some part of the administration. Danny Glover is the president. You have probably the best like side character, Woody Harrelson, as a conspiracy nut that uh, broadcasts at Yellowstone National Park from like a camper, like his little trailer. <laughs> he does a little pirate radio show about how the world's coming to the end, but he actually knows the truth about what's going on. And he has a map to, well, I don't want to spoil too much. You got a whole bunch of characters. That's a problem with all these movies, it's just too many characters, too many plot points, plot threads going on, but they're handled efficiently enough here, they're juggled well enough, and there's enough time that they're all given a little bit of space. And, you know, even though it is a long movie, I was never really bored. It didn't, it didn't feel that long. I guess the main point I would want to make about this is, 
unlike the day after tomorrow or a lot of these long, supposedly awesome action summer movies, is it doesn't slow down a lot. Like, it keeps, there's a story going on throughout it, which I enjoyed. That also has some cynical parts in it, uh, which I enjoyed. So there's like a little touch of Kubrick in there, even though it is a mainstream movie. Uh, but, you know, it, the, the story is punctuated by action throughout. There's always the, you know, the disaster on hand. It always has some new challenge that it's going to throw the characters, that's going to present the characters, some new development. Lots of good action sequences. They're fun. I know a lot of people mistakenly, you know, misguidedly will say that the action is unrealistic and ridiculous. And yes, it is. It's completely, completely ridiculous. <clears throat> I don't think there's one action scene that's really believable, but does that really matter? I mean, it's fun. Who cares? <laughs> as long as it's, you know, not just shit flying all around, you can't tell what's going on. I don't care. I'll... I believe that a limo can escape a, a city that's crawl, crumbling apart, whatever. As long as I can tell what that is going on in the action, good. And the special effects are good, I think, in this. Some people I've seen said they thought it looked bad, but... Maybe it's because like, it's one of the first movies I've watched on an HDTV, but I didn't watch it on Blu-ray. I, I thought the special effects looked fine. You know, it's all digital effects. This thing was all shot on green screen, blue screen, whatever. I would have liked to see a few like practical stunts and explosions thrown in there just to give it a little bit more texture, but I mean the digital effects that they use are I think among the best. It's as good as it's ever looked. I I'll, honestly I hated Avatar, but I also thought Avatar's special effects weren't that good. I liked the special effects here more. Maybe it's just because I thought Avatar looked cartoony and it was a fantasy world. Maybe that worked, made it work better for other people. But for me, I prefer what I saw here. At least, and what was going on here was more fun. Uh, so, you know, it never really slows down enough to get boring. There's enough interesting, like, cool ideas in it, like... I don't want to spoil anything, but obviously they have to have some sort of plan to have some of the human species survive so it can continue. And in that plan, there is definitely, like like I said before, like a nice touch of cynicism to it. And I liked Oliver Platt's character, the crooked politician guy. I liked the, some of the newsreel footage that they show. I thought that was kind of chilling. I liked the speech Danny Glover as president gives to the world or to the United States. Mostly I just liked that the action was fun, even though it was stupid and unbelievable, but you can't expect it. I mean, if there's some disaster movie that comes out that has like these great deep characters and all this you know, great drama and unbelievable special effects and, you know, smart action that's based on science, then the bar will be raised and I, you know, I'll give that movie five stars, but until then, this is, this is the template and this is kind of the cream of the crop of that genre. It really is the most fun I've had with, like, a disaster movie since Titanic, which I liked. I liked Titanic I think Titanic is still probably a better movie than this, but it's the most fat fun I've had with this specific kind of movie since Independence Day. And, you know, give it a chance, man. It's easy to write these things off. It would be easy for me to, like, just rip on it for being unrealistic and bad dialogue and generic characters, cliched storyline. But, you know, you have to judge a film not, not on what it isn't, but what it is, how well it represents its genre. And this is one of the best. I think it's fun, smart, some fun ideas, even though it's stupid, but it's a fun thrill ride from start to finish. You're going to enjoy it if you, if you know, you'll loosen up a little bit and just let it, let it take over your imagination. Have a fun time with it. Three out of five stars.